What is up, JLife Modo here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install the Lucid VSL cow light from DNC Designs. Stay tuned. So this part is replaces the cow brackets that's on the Jeep already. They're all color matched. The color matching for my Stingray is flawless. This is all made in America 100% from the LCD lights to the little blinker turn signal that's inside. There's the back. This is all really well made stuff. Install is super easy. There's four bolts that you're gonna swap out. Wiring is also super easy. We only have three wires to go off of. You have your white hot, which is for your LED light. You have, of course, your ground negative, which is the black and your green is for the turn signal. And you know, what you gotta do is run those three wires and you'll be set to go. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. I love wiring. As you can see, the new piece actually color matches the rest of the Jeep better than the cowl piece that I already have on there. Weird. So the first step to installing it, you're obviously going to need to remove the, the OEM cowl. Uh, to remove it, you have four bolts, one, two, three, and four. You take those four out, this is gonna pop right out. My, I have a little bit more to do just because I have the aftermarket light. Get your wires, run it through this little foam firewall. Like you can even slide it underneath. There we go. So the best way to doing this with these lights is to have a wire system already installed in the Jeep, whether it be the OEM ones, aftermarket. I have Switch Pros in mine. There are so many aftermarket available at this time. Choose your poison. So the way I wanna wire mine up, I wanna be able to operate the lights independently. So I'm not gonna be combining the two lives to one switch. I'm gonna be running one live to one switch and the other side to another switch. That way I can independently do left or right. You're gonna run it to whatever switch that you want it to go to. You wanna take off a little bit more. Depending on your comfort level of getting this done, you can use something like this, which is a butt connector. Put it in on both sides. You would crimp the middle, heat shrink the outside to waterproof it. However, I don't like to do my connections that way. What I prefer to do is solder my ends. It's just a more solid connection than using crimps. Make sure you get your heat shrink on before you do that. Soldering is really easy to do. There we go. Smoking. Once it's cooled down, just slide your heat shrink over it with the heat gun and make it watertight. And so the last two wires, I'm not gonna show you me actually soldering them. I'm just gonna show you where I do it at. Now the turn signal is not required, obviously, but if you want it to work with your turn signals, you're gonna have to splice into the line of your turn signals. And it's the same on both sides and I'll show you where that's at. So in my excitement, I kind of wired it on the outside of my hood strut. Just make sure you're running it where it needs to go before you commit to the soldering. Otherwise, you're going to have to clip your lines and redo it. You guys remember when I told you things to look for in inner fenders, ease of removing it? Perfect example and why. Thank you. 
So the turn signal wire is actually going to be inside your inner fender towards the cowl mounting location. If you come down here, it helps peeling that off. You'll see this cluster of wires in the back. Of course, this side's gonna look different because I have American Adventure Labs trail lights, which is what all this setup is. But right here, you see a white wire with a green stripe right there that is going to be the turn signal and it's going to be the same on both sides and you're going to need to tap into that now you can either tap in before which i'm not gonna lie that's that's gonna be really difficult to get to or you can tap in after which is what i'm going to do All right, so for the turn signal, I know I said it was the white and green, at least that's what it is on the driver's side was the white and green wire. And if you can see, it runs in to the second over from the left line, which means it should be coming out the second wire from the bottom, which is the red one. So I split it open. I tried tapping into it and testing it. It wasn't working. I thought, what the heck? Might as well try the white one since I'm in here, which the white one is leading to the orange and white. And that one got the turn signal where I want it to be. So that's the one I'm gonna be tapping into. But yeah, on the driver's side, it was the white and green. On the passenger side, orange and white. Hmm. So if you made a boo-boo like I did, don't fret. We can fix it. It's as simple as just cutting the line and soldering it back together and using a new heat shrink seal. And if you're intimidated with soldering, don't be, it's actually really easy. Thinking about it, probably should have done the same with this one. I snipped it, then combined them all together. But I was thinking I was just going to use electric tape on it. Get it all together. And you wanna make sure you don't have two wi live wires kind of exposed on itself. So what I'm gonna do, is just get some tape to kind of hold it. Get a little barrier. A nice little barrier and from here plug it back in make sure you hear the click red tab push your push tab back in and I had the extra wire out of the way. So if you look closely, there's gonna be a green and a white wire right there. That's gonna be the one that ties into the blinker. So the last line we need to run is gonna be the negative. Now, back here is the negative terminal, terminal bus. This is a really good spot to run. I'm just getting really crammed in mine. But, so just crimp on a ring terminal and Hook it onto uh, where you got room on your negative bus. <clears throat> if you don't have access to this because you have something in the way, kind of like I do, any unpainted bolt will work. Here's the bolt I'm going to be hooking up to just, just to ground my circuit. Though it's not the most aesthetically pleasing, it doesn't look bad here, and it will fit the bill for now. An unpainted bolt or nut will suffice. Uh, I'm just going to be running it right here to this unpainted bolt and we should be good to go. And when it's all said and done, just make sure you wrap up all your wires together, whether it be in a wire loom or electrical tape, just to really clean up the look and to help protect the wires in the long run. So now that we got this all done, I'm just going to put my inners back in and make sure everything's all tightened up. 
and we'll wait for we'll wait for nightfall we'll test it so real quick just because i know not everyone's going to want to wire each side independently like i did though i find that way a lot more beneficial that way you're being able to control the throw of the light rather than just complete side it could be more functional this way but it's super easy you have your two lights on each side of the cow here is the hood of the jeep of course your engine's down here so you have your ground on both sides you're just going to run the ground over combine them and finish off your ground of course your turn signals are going to have to be wired to each individual turn signal because they're on separate circuits don't combine the green and of course the white light which i'm going to represent with rex that's what i have if you want the lights to come on together just like you did with the grounds you're going to tie them in together and you're going to run it to your your power supply and that way when you hit one button both lights come on of course i didn't do it that way but this is a real simple diagram so it makes sense when I first got into Jeeps, wiring was actually one of the things I dreaded the most because I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Wiring is actually really simple and really easy. Just take your time and don't worry about wiring. You mess it up, you cut it, and you repair it, kind of like what I did earlier. It's not hard to do. Hello. So here's a look from the front of the Jeep from an elevated position. Here's it from the side at a more eye level position. From this side. From this side. So here's how I have mine wired up. Left alley light, right alley light. The most useful thing for this is actually off-roading. I've been told by some off-roaders that the fact that I have lights on my Jeep, I'm a, it's a mall crawler just for that sole purpose that you don't need lights to go off-roading or you're in a giant line when you go off-roading at night and you shouldn't have your lights on anyway because you're going to be blinding your friends. Well, I don't go off-roading in giant groups. I go with very minimal people and it's very open. And there have been situations where I'm climbing up something and I need to start turning and I look over and since you it's dark, see. it's pitch black and I'm having to poke out a flashlight to make sure I don't go tumbling down the mountain to make sure I'm going in the right spot. Well, guess what? Now I got the perfect light for this. Furthermore, if you like to go camping and this light will just turn on and flood the side of the Jeep, if you're setting something up, if you got a buddy who broke on the trail and you want to help light his stuff up, you don't always have to position your headlights at him. You can just pull up to the side of them and turn on these alley lights. So easy a mo can do it. In all seriousness, this install will take you an hour and a half, two and a half hours, depending on how comfortable you are with just tearing into things. Another awesome function of these lights, it'll make my filming a lot easier when it's dark. So from inside the cab, and I turn them on. My final opinion of these, they're really nice lights. They have a lot of function to them and they're really well made. Despite what you will hear from some naysayers saying those serve no purpose they do <laughs> they do serve a purpose and the big one is like i was saying off-roading at night taking hard turns where you can't see where you're going i like to do exciting and thrilling things in my jeep i don't typically just do dirt roads at night which of course it's totally fine if that's what you do i just 
I, I like having that. And of course, being able to see to the side of your Jeep, a bunch of different circumstances, is this going to be beneficial? I can be able to, I can film <laughs> the lighting at night for me. Filming is going to be amazing. And what's also really nice about the turn signals being on the side of the Jeep. Well, now you'll be able to signal to those nincompoops on the freeway when you're you're in the first lane the second lane's empty and then the third lane there's another guy and you're like i want to move over you turn your turn signal on of course they're the side of you they can't see your turn signal so you just start slowly creeping then the other car starts slowly creeping and but now with the turn signal on the side they'll be like, hey he's coming this way i'm gonna slow down and speed up well guys go and check out dnc designs the link in the description below thank you for watching and remember to like comment subscribe and share Stay tuned for the next one, y'all. Keep it easy.